Alright. What have you observed of our seed over there? Diba? The, the roots are hogging the, root, the, the earth and its branches are growing. And as it grows, as the, it is very inspiring, right? It's very beautiful. Why? Because it is growing. Do you want growth in your lives? Amen. We want growth in our lives. We want growth in our cities. And when there is growth, it's a beauty for us. It is very inspiring for, uh, for our lives. And right now, what should we do with our seeds? What should we do? What are we going to do with our seeds? If you have your Bibles with you, let's open our Bibles in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 6. And it says in his verse, God says, Sow your seed in the morning, and at evening let your hands not be idle. For you do not know which will succeed, whether this or that, or whether both will do equally well. So let us bow our heads and let us pray. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, we just invite your presence, Lord God, to be in this place. Lord God, we don't want to do this by might, nor by power, but only by your Spirit. Lord God, we humbly ask for your presence, your Holy Spirit, to speak to our minds, speak to our hearts today. And right now, Lord God, we ask for your anointing, we ask for your wisdom, and we ask for your favor. Lord God, let not any man or woman, Lord God, get out of fear, Lord God, without their lives being changed. Today, we claim the victory, and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, Amen and Amen. Could just give God our very best clap offering. So once again, what should we do with our seed? We, God had given us a beautiful seed and we should not squander it, especially when our seed means Savior's excellent and enriching deal. So you do, want, do you want a uh, deal with our Lord Jesus Christ? Do you want that? You want a good deal, right? Especially when it is an excellent and enriching deal with our Lord Jesus Christ. But for us, to get that enriching deal, that excellent deal with our Lord Jesus Christ. The first thing we need to do, that, what should we do? It says in this verse, what should we do? What's that again? I didn't hear you. What's that again? Sow your seed. Because not unless we sow our seed, not unless we plant our seed, nothing will happen with our seed. It is useless. It is meaningless. And not only that, in the next verse it says, for you do not know which will succeed. So it implies that in our seeds, there is a good seed, there is a bad seed, right? But the seed that we have right now is a very good seed. Why? Because this seed came from heaven. This seed came from our Lord Jesus Christ. And the only thing we need to do with our seed is to plant it in good soil. Amen? Let's plant it in fertile soil ground so that it may grow and blossom. All right? So today, are you ready to hear God's word? Are you ready to plant your seed? Amen. So what are the seeds that we have in our lives today? We have three things, three different seeds that we have in our lives. And the first thing is money. Do you have money today? Could you ask your seatmate right now? Do you have money today? Okay, maingay. Baka utangan kayo ng katabi nyo. So, okay, may ingay sa dalan yung pera. But, of course, all of us, each one of us, have our own money in our pockets today. And what should we do with our money? It says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 to 10, it says here, Honor the Lord with your possessions. Honor the Lord, meaning let's worship God with our possessions. Let's respect Him. Get, give Him the honor with our wealth. Let's worship Him. And how do we worship our God? With the first fruits of all your increase. First fruits meaning the best of your increase. The best, the first fruits, the best that you have. Let's give it to our God. And as we give it to Him, we're saying that money is not our God. Amen. Only the one true God, only the Lord Jesus Christ is our God and money is not our God. Yes, money could do many things for us, right? It could pay for our enrollment. It could pay for our hotel right now here. Money could give us what we want. It could give us our cars. It could give us our houses. But money will not answer everything. Only the one true and living God could answer all of our problems. Amen? Amen. So again, let's give God our very best clap offering there. 
And God says, with our wealth, with our money, let's give it to him. Why? Because we could not have any money in our pockets if God did not give us anything, right? If God did not give you the skill, if God did not give you the anointing, the favor, you have nothing put, to put in your pocket. And the reason why we're able to give, it's because he had favored our lives. Amen? Amen. And today, we have that money seed, we have that seed of money, but where will we place it? Where will we plant it? Where will we sow it? So in our lives today, in our generation, there are so many businesses wherein we could plant our seed. There are so many investments. There are so many um, foundations. There are so many orphanages wherein we could plant our seed. But today, may we consider this church. This is our church, right? This is our house. May you consider this institution, this church, to wherein it may be a good and fertile ground. Why? What, did, what had this church done in the past few years? Number one, we had established one of its in institutions, the Way J Foundation, the We Exalt You Jesus Foundation. And its heart is to reach out to the poorest of the poor of the Philippines. Para yan sa atin, sa mga kababayan natin ng mga Filipino, we have this foundation and we ask help from the rich people. We get help from them, not for ourselves, not for this church, but we give it back to the poor. We buy relief goods, we buy medicines, and you know what? Since 1999, this is the total missions that we have accomplished, 215 missions. So it's a good project of the church. Not only that, number two, we have this institution established, the Kid, kid movement, meaning Kabataan Iwas Droga Movement. So the government had empowered this movement to go into the schools, to go into campuses, to share them the awareness of drugs. That, that, that drugs could affect them and could cut their future, could destroy their future, and the government had allowed us. And right now, we have a joke, we have a different meaning already of kid movement. Why? Because if the kids, if the kabataan doesn't want to stop selling drugs or buying drugs, we have a new definition. Kabataan, iwas, Duterte na. Di ba? Kasi ayaw ni Duterte ng drugs, so if ayaw to Miguel, naku po, kay Duterte na kayo haharap. So while we have the kid movement, kabataan, iwas, droga movement, may they learn from our church already. And not only that, we have already also established a school in our church, the, the Caruso Christian Academy, we believe that the future of our nation lies in our children. So while they are young, we're already imparting values to them, not only in intellectual values, but also about the heart, about spirituality, that they may grow a better person in our generation, in our nation. And fourth, we also have our white light White light wherein, you know what, it does productions, it does theatrical plays, it does concerts. You know what, the Filipinos love concerts, right? We love shows, we love singing people, we have love dancing, we love entertainment. And you know what, white light, what did they do? This is their accomplishment. Introduce Christ to 22,132 people already. That's what they did with, uh, with our with the power of entertainment to the power of Jesus Christ. And lastly, we also established the Movers Institute. Why? Because our church is, being, is influencing churches at Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And they're looking up to our church, especially in Das Marinas. And they're copying us. They're, they want to, to imitate what we're doing. And you know what? There's, this is our accomplishment here. Equip 178 pastors already. So these are the some, just some of the few institutions that our church had established and there is so much more. And may we consider this church as a good soil wherein we could plant our seed. And what happens when we plant our seed? What happens when we plant it in good soil? In Proverbs 3.10 it says, So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. So na, siguro right now, we could not relate with barns, right? So what's a barn? You don't know what a barn is right now. So a barn, let's, let's translate it to a different uh, term. Let your businesses be filled with plenty. Amen? Who has businesses here? No one has businesses. Some of us have businesses. Do you want your businesses to be filled with plenty? Right? Let's sow our seed. And your vats will overflow. 
So gusto niyo ba yung VATS niyo mag-overflow? Ano ba yan? Value added tax? So sabi ni B9 sa kanyang last presidential debate, tatanggalin niya daw ang VAT. Tatanggalin niya daw lahat yun. Sarap, di ba? Puro libre. Pero paano kaya niya gagawin yun? Pero VAT is not that. VAT is, what is it? A large water tank. When God pours out His blessings, it will overflow. So when the leaders, when the pastors say, nag-uumapaw ang blessing ng Panginoon, we did not just make that up. It came from the Bible. It's biblical. It will overflow in our lives. Amen? Amen. And you know what? I had a story because this is the preaching of my dad last Sunday and I believe uh, I got it from him because I believe it's also his message for us today. And you know what? After the service, after the fourth service, I think, in Church of God, Dasmarinas, someone gave him a letter. He could not explain it personally. It was too long. So he gave the letter to my dad. And when my dad read about it, he, this is what it says. You know what, Pastor? This message, you had this same message already years and years back ago. And you know what? You're telling us once again to plant that seed, to sow that seed, to, to give to the Lord. And that's the challenge. And I want to take part of that challenge. But what does that man say? What did that man say? You know what, Pastor? At that time, years ago, I only had 250 pesos. That's all I have in my wallet. Nothing more, nothing less. 250 pesos. And you know what? The next day, Lord, the next day, Pastor, I'm gonna enroll my three children into school, 120,000 each. But Lord God, uh, but today, Pastor, I want to take that challenge. I want to take the challenge. So at that time, he only had 250 pesos, but he took part of the challenge. He gave his 250 pesos unto the Lord. And guess what had happened the next day? Out of nowhere, miraculously it happened, somebody gave him 100,000 pesos. You know what? That's amazing, right? Di ba kayo na-amaze? Parang walang amazement na yun. Kung ba't amazed kayo, palakman natin si Lord. Amen, di ba? So, na, yung person mismo na yun had only 250 pesos at that time, but he gave it to the Lord, and the next day, someone gave him 100,000 pesos. Miraculously. Gusto nyo ba nyo ng ganong experience? Amen? I want that experience, yung 250 pesos ko naging 100,000 pesos the next day. Kaya pakisabi sa yung katabi ngayon, itanim mo na. Itanim mo na, baka walang pantanim. Sabi nung katabi mo, walang pantanim. Pero no problem. Kapag po ikaw ay walang pantanim na pera, pakilabas dyan bro, baka meron kang talent. Pakiatanong nga ang katabi mo, may talent ka ba? Alright, so one of these days, we're gonna conduct our worship 101 here at Church of God, Marriott, Manila. So if you know how to sing, if you know how to dance, if you know how to play the drums, you may be a child, you may be a youth or adult, you're very much welcome here. But if you don't know how to play any instrument, you may know how to usher. Marunong ka bang ngumiti ngayon? Sige nga, sample na yung katabi nyo. Ngiti ka naman, kapatid. Alright, diba? If you know how to smile, you know how to greet, you're very much welcome to join our ushering ministry. So there are many ministries here in church and we would love to be with you there. And we have our talents. Who has talents here? Of course, all of us have our own talents. But if we don't use our talents for the glory of God, someone will take it away. Someone will use it for his own glory. So if you don't use this status for our God, the world will use it. Just like the video that I'm going to show you today, this is the best illustration to show it. It's a four-minute video, and I would love to share it with you. So let's play the video, please. Katy Perry, who is one of the greatest pop artists of all time, who has more Twitter followers than anyone else in the world, with nearly 66 million, has drawn millions of unsuspecting young fans into her dark web with her seemingly fun-loving, innocent bubblegum persona. But as with so many other leading artists in the satanically dominated music industry, there is far more to Katy Perry than meets the eye, because under her bright persona lies great darkness. They're evangelical, you know, and my dad has got a little Pentecostal in him because he's from Memphis, so uh, they're a, a smorgasbord of, of Christianity. So it's impossible, I'm guessing, to live one's life without still having some of this in your heart. Of course, you, you have the roots, exactly but sometimes, you know, the uh, details change. Details change. 
And just how much have the details changed? Pride can bow and die for you and me. Katy Perry was brought up praising God and singing in church, even releasing a gospel album under her father's last name as Katie Hudson. However, Katie tells us that as a 15-year-old, she wanted to be the next big Christian pop artist like Amy Grant. But her rise to stardom never really got off the ground. It is at this time that Katie turned her back on her professed faith in God and swears that she sold her soul to the devil in her quest to become a world-famous pop star. I released a gospel record when I was 15 um, because I grew up in uh, you know, a household where all I ever did was listen to gospel music and my parents are both traveling ministers and so I kind of sang about you know what was going on in my life at 15 and that's how I got introduced to the music industry. I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. Sold my soul to the devil. Katie's admission to selling her soul is further substantiated in her song Rock God. Perry not only wrote the song Rock God, which is also sung by Selena Gomez, but the song appears to be biographical of her betrayal of her creator and her selling her soul to the god of rock and roll, who she has already identified as the devil. Perry sings about rejecting the preacher's call to walk the straight and narrow path that Jesus Christ said leads to eternal life and selling her soul to the rock god who possesses her with his music. So what in the world is Katie singing about? I sold my soul to the devil. God commands us in his word to expose the evil works of darkness that Satan is using to lead the world astray. In Perry's song, Rock God, Katie rejects the counsel of the preacher, who she also appears to refer to as her father, and states emphatically that she is selling her soul. In 2013, Perry's father, Keith, who is an ordained minister, asked for prayer for his daughter's soul. Katie's father broke down in tears over her choice to serve Satan. He acknowledged, as she did earlier, that she is doing Satan's work, exclaiming, quote, My girl Katy Perry is a devil child, end quote. Her father Keith further acknowledged, quote, I was at a concert of Katie's where there were 20,000. I was watching this generation and they were going at it. It was almost like church, Keith said. I stood there and wept and kept on weeping and weeping. They're loving and worshiping the wrong thing, end quote. Near the end of the song Rock God, Katie reiterates her decision to reject Jesus' call to salvation and underscores her decision to follow the Rock God, declaring she is not turning back. That's Katy Perry, and you know what? She's a daughter of a pastor. And when we don't give our talents unto the Lord, we don't use it for His glory, someone will use it. Someone will take it away from us. And that's a sad story. So some of you may be singing your songs. Our children may be singing your songs, right? And it's so sad that it gives glory to the enemy. It gives glory to the devil. But you know what? Our talents, we have our own talents. May we plant that seed in good soil. May we make use of it to glorify our God. Why? Because our body is geared to praise the Lord. Amen? Our body is geared to praise the Lord. As it says in Psalm 150, verse 1 to 6, it says, Praise the Lord. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. That's our purpose, that's our reason for living, to praise the Lord. And what, where should we do it? God says, praise God in His. Praise God in His sanctuary, in this church. Let's use our talents. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. And why should we praise our God? Why should we praise? Why in the world should we praise our God? It says in His word, praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Has God been good to your life? Has God been good to your family? And that's the reason, that's the only reason 
That's why we need to praise and worship Him. Why? Because our Father in heaven, Jesus Christ, has been good and very good at done great and mighty acts for our lives. And how should we do it? Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. If you're a trumpeteer over here, you're very much welcome here. Praise Him with the lute and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. That's why we have our dance ministry here in church. Because it says in His Word, praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with the instruments and flutes. Praise Him with the loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. If you have our talents, let's make use it for our glory to our God. But you say you don't know how to dance, you don't know how to sing, you don't know how to play the instrument, no worries. Why? Because this is what God says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen? Let every, do you have breath today? We have our own breath. It may be good breath or bad breath, right? But you have your breath with you and when you have breath, you could sing, you just could shout and let us praise the Lord. It says God there, it says in His word, praise the Lord. Could we shout it into three? One, two, three. Parang mahina. One, two, three. Praise Amen. Let's praise the Lord. Amen. So let's sow our seed. Let's plant our seed of talent into God's holy presence. But you may say right now you don't have money to plant. You don't have talent to plant. Maybe when God showered his money and talent, you took up your umbrella at hindi ka naambunan ng talent and ng money. But no worries. Maybe you have that little strength to share. Right? You may have that little strength kasi nabuhat mo pa yung umbrella eh. Pang shower, pang cover mo sa ulan. So maybe you have that little strength to share and that may be used by our God. And who's that person in the Bible? Sino ba may little strength to share? And his name is Gideon. Are you familiar with that name, Gideon? Right? He's in the Bible and he's in Judges chapter 6, verse 15. And in this time, Gideon was in war with the Midianites. And what is the case of Gideon? Who is Gideon? He was saying to God. So he said to the Lord God Almighty, O oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Lord, who am I? Who am I, Gideon? Who is this name? Lord, hindi ako kilala, hindi ako magaling. Lord, indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh. So you know what? In Israel, there are 12 tribes and Manasseh is the weakest. And Gideon is part of the tribe. They are the weakest clan. And not only that, and I am the least in my father's house. So sa Manasseh, sila na yung pinaka-weakest. So merong maraming families in that clan. And the, the family of Gideon is the weakest. Wow. So that's who Gideon is. But what does God say about that little strength to share, that little strength of Gideon that he has in verse 14? It says, Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? God says, Go in this might of yours. You don't have money, you don't have talent, but you're in your weakness, God is strong. Amen? In our weakness, in our nothingness, in our littlest strength to share, that's how God will use you. And God says, have I not sent you? Have I not sent the worship team here? Have I not sent the congregation here? God sent each one of us here. That's why we are here. Kaya po wag tayo aalis. So tayo lilipat. Why? Because God is the one who sent you and we have a battle to face. And you know what? This is what Gideon accomplished in his little strength in his weakness, this is his recruit. He said, Lord, here are 32,000 men. In the little weakness of, in the little strength of Gideon, he was able to recruit 32,000 men. So let's, let's think about it. Maybe we're in the Philippines, we're in battle with China. Joke, joke lang not for us to imagine it. So we're saying, Lord, we have 32,000 men. And then God says, no, 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 Gideon, you're getting it all wrong. In that 32,000 men, marami dyan, atapang atao, atulin na takbo. Diba? Marami dyan, tatakbo, mga duwag, 32,000. Ako, Gideon, get, get new recruits, slash out, at ano nangyari. So sabi niya kay Lord, Lord, here are 10,000 men. Lord, here are 10,000 able and strong men. Lord, I present them to you. But God says, once again, no, 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 no. Adami pa rin dyan. Atuli na takbo. Wala pa rin yan. Pero sabi ni Gideon, nag-slash pa rin si Lord dyan. And anong natira? Yan. 300 men was left. 
So parang totoo pala yung 300 na movie, no? So 300 men was, were left with Gideon. Anong kalaban nila? Kalaban nila yung Midianites. Ang ratio is 300 is to 122,000. When we look deeper, when we look closer, it is 1 into 400. So ang soldier ni Gideon, for him to have the right to die, kailangan niya muna makapatay ng 400 men. And then okay ka na mamatay. Pag namatay ka ng may 400 ka na napatay, tabla ang laban. So sabi ni Lord, yan. Match na match yan. Yan, yan ang gusto ko. Match. One is to 400. But not only that, you're not gonna face them, sabi niya kay Gideon, God said to Gideon, you're not gonna face them with swords and spears. But will you bring, you're gonna bring lanterns and trumpets. Wow, match na match yan. Lanterns and trumpets go into the army and that's how you will win. So you know what? This is what God is telling us right now. In your little strength to share, there's power in it. There's victory because God with us, is with us in it. Amen? Amen and amen. And I'd like to share the story of our YA ministry at Das Marinas. You know what? They go to SM to share God's word in their little strength. Why? Because our YA in Das Marinas, not all of them are of graduated college. Not all of them are rich. Not all of them have talents, good talents. But in their little strength, they go into the streets. Get, they go inside SM. They go into the food court. And then what do they do? They have a placard, Jesus died to give you life. And they get a selfie with them. Why? Because the Filipinos love selfies, right? We love selfies. We love picture-picture. So when a person there is linga-linga, hindi niya alam gagawin, didikita na nila at isi-share yung mensahe ng Panginoon. So when you're at SM, wag po kayo lilinga-linga. Baka lapitan kayo ng ating mga outreach people, mga YA people. And that's what they do. That's what they do in their little strength. They are able to worship God. They are able to be used mightily by our God. And in our life, specifically in business, there are short-term investments, right? Short-term investments, there are small yield. In a long-term investment, it's a high yield, high reward. But you know what? God is not luring us into those investments. God is not convincing us in those earthly investments. Why? Because God wants us to invest in eternal investments. If we, if we plant our seed in something eternal, hindi, hindi. Mananakaw yan sa atin. Kasi ang pagtanim natin ay para sa ating Panginoon. Amen? Amen. And I would like to end here in the story of our one of our church members. This is Ate Rem. You know what? My dad visited him two weeks ago. And he needed to visit Ate Rem, the one in the middle, the woman over there. Why? Because she's a jolly person. She's a hardworking minister, hardworking worker of the church. And my dad really wanted to visit her. And when he was there, everything was all right already. It was a relaxed moment. It was a joking moment and already happy, happy moment already. And then suddenly, Kuya Ronald, the husband, shared the story. Because he told my dad, Pastor, this is what had happened. My wife was his, her, her stomach is very, very painful. That's why we brought her to the hospital. So after how many days, we're about to go out of the hospital already. We're already cleared, but suddenly, uh, when we're about to go out already, suddenly, her mouth foamed, nagbula yung kanyang bibig, nagbabos ang kanyang bibig. And Kuya Ronald was very afraid because he was thinking that his wife was already gonna be dead. Mamamatay na kanyang asawa. So what did he do? He tried to revive, pinap niya yung puso ni Ate Rem. Talagang very hard, talagang desperate. And he was saying to Lord, Lord, Hindi naman ganun kabait yung asawa ko, pero Lord, pakibuhay naman. Mahal na mahal ko to. So ganun ang kanyang prayer. At sabi niya kay Lord, Lord, talagang pinapump niya patuloy. And sabi niya, Lord, Lord, buhayin mo lang ang aking asawa at ako yung maglilingkod para sa'yo. Lord, just, just give her another chance, give her another life, and I will serve you mightily. And praise God, God hears our prayers. Amen. You know what? Ate Rem was able to recover. They got confined again at the hospital and they, they are now relaxed once again. So may napumutok palang ugat kaya pala nag-foam ang bibig ni Ate Rem. So that's his story to my dad and they were laughing about it already. Kwentuhan na. Then suddenly it came to a serious matter when Kuya Rona, the husband, told my dad, 
Alam mo, pastor, para kung mahoga ni tree. So yung dad ko, hindi naman niya naintindihan yung sinasabi, anong mahoga ni tree? So my dad didn't mind it. Just move on, talagang ano lang, kwento-kwento lang. Then the second time, Kuya Ronald once again told my dad, Pastor, I'm like a mahogany tree. Para kung mahogany, Pastor. So hindi pa rin mag dad ko, so tahimik lang siya, he just kept silent. But for the last time, Kuya Ronald, sabi niya, Pastor, seryoso po ako. Para po kung mahogany tree. And then my dad asked, Kuya Ronald, ano bang ibig sabihin mo ng mahogany tree? Ano bang gusto mong iparating? Sabi niya sa dad ko, Kuya Ronald said, Pastor, para akong mahogan ni Tri. Ako'y isang matibay na puno. Mahogan ni Tri, matibay. Matibay ako, mataas ang aking, ang aking branch. Okay ako na puno. Mahogan ni Tri. Pastor, okay akong kristyano. Matibay na matibay akong kristyano. Every Sunday ako nagsisimba. Every Sunday akong maaga sa church. Lagi ako dyan, always present. Pero sabi niya, oo nga, mahoga ni tri ako, solid na tri ako, pero ang puno ko ay walang bunga. My fruit, my, my tree is fruitless. And he told my dad, Pastor, kailangan pa bang may muntikang mamatay pa bago ko mag-commit sa Panginoon? Pastor, kailangan ba may mamatay muna sa amin, may magkasakit muna sa amin, mahirapan muna kami bago ko maglingkod para sa Panginoon? Yun pala ang ibig sabihin ng mahogan ni Tri. So may dad ask permission to share it in the congregation and now I'm sharing it to you. And maybe you're, we are that mahogan ni Tri as well. We're always present. We're always here. We're always here early in the morning. But maybe we forgot to plant our seed. We forgot to plant our seed. Kaya we don't bear any fruit. And this is the message of God today. It's really to plant your seed in good soil and fertile ground. And today, if the Holy Spirit is prompting you today, you're saying, Lord, oh nga, no? I'm like a mahogany tree. And if God is telling you, you have these three seeds, money, talent, and a little strength to share, pwede ba itanim mo yan ngayon sa presensya ng Panginoon? So if that's you, as the worship team sings this song, you're free to come to the altar and we will pray for you. Hallelujah. Give myself away so you Let's sing this 
with all our heart. Just raise up our hands today and join me in this prayer. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Sing this, let's shout it out with all our hearts. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. We come to you today. We come to you today. And ask for forgiveness. And ask for forgiveness. For just being a strong tree. For just being here in church every Sunday. Every Sunday. But Lord, not planting my seed. But Lord God, planting my seed. Not sowing my seed. And sowing my seed. But today, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, Lord Jesus Christ. I commit to you. I commit to you. I sow my seed in your presence. In your presence. And Lord God. And Lord God. Let it bear fruit. Let it, let it bear fruit. So that my life. So that my life. May be blessed. And my family, and my family may be blessed. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Could just give God our very best clap offering. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. And right now, as we give our tithes and offering, I know the Lord is prompting you and telling you, you could never outgive our God. Amen. And today, whatever God is leading you, to sow that seed of money, to sow that seed of wealth, there's no need to fear as we sow our seed in His presence. Why? Because we could never outgive our God. So whatever the prompting of the Holy Spirit for you to give today, just give it freely and God will return it to you a hundredfold. Amen? So could thou raise up our tithes and offering to our God? And may we all stand and let's pray for our tithes and offering. Yes, let's all stand. And hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, thank you for this gift of wealth. Lord God, thank you for the financial blessings. Lord God, without you, we are nothing, Lord God. Without you, Lord Jesus Christ, we are empty. But Lord God, as we raise up our tithes and offering, we're declaring, Lord, that money has no power over us. That money is not our God. Lord God, that money will not have the last say in our lives, Lord. Only you, Lord Jesus Christ, will have the last say in our lives. And right now, we give it to you. May it be a pleasing offering and a worship for the one true and living God. And Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for this wonderful service. Thank you for your presence. Lord God, we did not do it by might nor by power, but only by your Spirit. And Lord Jesus Christ, bless the people who are in this place. Bless this church, Lord Jesus. And Lord God, may it grow, Lord God, that it may have an impact and significance in our city. Lord God, bless your people. Bless their families. We commit the rest of this day to you. We claim the victory. And we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, Amen and Amen. God bless everyone. Go in peace. Hallelujah. So